Hey friends, welcome back to the channel. So I'm pretty new to drones and I've been learning how to fly FPV with the DJI NEO for around 4 months. This is my first drone and I've crashed it so many times I've already lost count. Unfortunately, one of the motors got damaged, it feels rough to turn, and the DJI app throws an ESC error when I power it on. I consulted the local DJI service center about this and after learning that they would need to send the drone to Hong Kong just to get it fixed, I decided it was a good opportunity to try out the motor upgrade that I've seen some other people do. So I went ahead and ordered a set of these Happy Model EX1103 KV11000 motors that are meant for the Mobula 8 Tiny Whoop drone. These motors are slightly larger than the stock ones but the mounting points on the bottom appear to line up closely so they should fit with some minor modification. As you can see, I've already cut off the faulty motor and soldered on the new one so I could first check if it powers up properly and eliminates the ESC error. It appears to get through the startup process properly now and looking at the DJI app, all the errors are gone. So I can now proceed to replacing the rest of the motors. To remove the motor, you'll need to take out the mounting screws and then lift the wire out of the channel so you can cut it. You'll want to cut about halfway from the motor to the drone body and then carefully pull the motor out. Now we can get a good look at the area where the motor sits, and you'll find it's molded to the shape of the stock motor's base. It's not the same shape as what we have on the replacement motors, so we'll have to carve out this section a bit to get the motor to sit properly. Also, the channel where the wires are going into is too small for the new motor, so we'll have to adjust there as well. You can do this your own way and with whatever tool works best for you, but I used the soldering iron to melt the hole and make it bigger. I then used wire cutters and a small chisel to remove some of the plastic to create a flat surface inside. The screw holes themselves are also too small so you need to make them bigger to get the screws to fit through. You'll want to do these steps very carefully as taking out too much plastic could leave you with a loose fit. If you find that the motor bell is scraping against the base, you can add some washers under the motor before screwing it in to give it enough clearance. Now you might find that the screw holes don't line up perfectly. But just keep making small adjustments and you should get it to where the motor is seated pretty much centered in the duct. I've worked on custom plastic models before so I have some experience doing this sort of thing. But this will be my first time soldering anything so please go easy on me when we get to that point. Once we have the motor screwed on, we can proceed to soldering the wires. I watched Joshua Bardwell's tutorials on soldering and building a drone from scratch. So I have a rough idea of how this is supposed to work. Each motor will have three wires, so we just strip the ends to expose the wire and solder them to the ones on the drone which are connected to the ESC. The motor wires are easy enough to strip with your fingernails, but the ones on the Neo are pretty stuck together inside this gray shrink tubing, so you'll need to be extra careful in parting them out and stripping the ends. These wires are tiny and you don't have much slack to work with, so be extra careful not to accidentally cut them. Now again, this is my first time soldering so you'll have to bear with me as I make a mess of this step. At this point, we aren't too worried about which wire connects to where, as long as they aren't touching and shorting out. Once it's all wired, we'll power it up and check for errors in the DJI app. And then later, we can proceed to checking the direction the new motor is spinning. Since this is the left rear motor, it should be spinning in the same direction of the front right motor. Here I can see that the front right motor is spinning counterclockwise, but the motor I'm working on is spinning clockwise instead. We can easily fix this by swapping any of the two wires for this motor. After making the switch, we'll test again to double check that the motor is now spinning in the right direction. With that cleared up, we can proceed with the other motors doing the same steps for each one. Now that we have all four motors in place, we'll check the direction they're rotating just to be sure. And there's still too much slack on the wires, so we'll want to trim them down and basically redo the soldering. Just make sure you do this one wire at a time so you don't mix up the order of the wires again. You can use whatever insulation you have handy, but here I just used a bit of electrical tape to keep the wires from dangling around. For props, I used the Gemfan D51 2024 blade, which I don't have screws for at the time, but later found that the M27mm screws work best for this combination. With everything in order, it's finally time to test it out. Taking off for the first time with these new motors, I can definitely tell the difference. It feels more responsive to the control inputs and has quicker acceleration when applying throttle. 
Rolls feel a lot smoother, and the Neo just feels lighter, more agile, and can recover from dives much easier than it did with the stock motors. So I feel more confident doing splitters and power loop maneuvers with this setup. As for top speed, it does feel like there is a slight improvement, but the battery life takes a big hit when you're flooring it for extended periods. Here I'm flying against the wind at max throttle, and you can just watch the battery drop quickly. But turning around and flying with the wind, we went over 80 km per hour. I think that's the fastest I've ever seen the Neo go. After testing with a few more batteries, I found that I did lose about a minute of flying time overall. I used to get around 8-9 to nine minutes flying in M mode. Now it's down to like 7 minutes, but I'm still happy with the improvement in power as I can keep practicing more complicated maneuvers and tricks. With regards to the noise level, I think we'll attribute that to the props and not the motors themselves. It sounds like a lower pitch to my ears, but not significantly more quiet than the stock 3-bladed props. Now for the big question, is this actually an upgrade? Yes, if you're like me and training up to fly a real FPV drone in acro mode. If you have a similar setup, the Neo, the goggles, and the FPV controller, then you can try the motor swap if you want a bit more power to do tricks. But that's not to say that the Neo doesn't have enough as it is. If you check out Dronarchy on YouTube, he does some pretty crazy stuff with the stock Neo. So big shout out to him, I link to his channel in the description if you want to see what the Neo can do in capable hands. But if you're more into just cruising around and have no intention of doing the flips and dives and power loops and whatnot, then you're probably better off with the stock motors, which I believe DJI tuned to give the best battery life. I hope you liked this video. If you have any questions, leave them down in the comments below and I'll get to them as soon as I can. If you're learning how to fly FPV yourself and you'd like to follow along on my journey, hit the subscribe button down below to see what I get up to next. Thanks for watching and I'll see you all in the next one.